I put the Area 419 Maverick fully modular suppressor on Ultimate Reloader's recoil rig and got some surprising results. Gavin Gee here from UltimateReloader.com. That's right, another scientific data-driven oriented story that's gonna provide some insights related to recoil, specifically covering Area 419's Maverick suppressor. The Maverick suppressor is fully modular, and I think there's a couple different audiences this specific product is aimed towards. First, competitors. PRS, NRL Hunter, and then the second would be Hunters. This thing is configurable from mild to wild, suppressor, moderator, braked configurations. There's a lot that you can do. And we already did an in-depth story. Area 419 came to the Ultimate Reloader Ranch. And what I'm hoping you'll get a sense of is what all the different configurations do with control of the rifle and sight picture mm -hmm. from a non-prone position. When you're prone, everything gets subtle, everything's yep. washed out. But when it really counts, when you're in a position, you need to see that rifle track and bullet fly. This is where it matters. So I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna like what you find here. Yep. Craig and I worked through the system. We had a 25 Creedmoor rifle. We shot it with different configurations. We learned all about the system. So if you wanna know kind of the basic product info, I'm gonna steer you to that video and that article. In this video, we're gonna do a brief recap of all the parts, of all the different configurations that you can run. We're gonna put it on the recoil rig and talk about the results. Finally, I'll conclude with some next steps that I wanna pursue testing both this suppressor and other suppressors and brakes. So here's the parts and components. So from left to right on the picture you see here, we've got the thread protecting cap, the stage one module, which is a part of the 9.2 inch version. Maverick is available as eight inch and 9.2 inch for the max length of the suppressed config. I have the 9.2 inch version, which gives you maximum flexibility. The third part here is the Maverick self-timing brake. We've got the blast baffle, the rear cap and mount assembly, the core suppressor assembly, the stage two baffle, and the stage two baffle stack. Again, if you wanna know more about what each of these parts are, and specifically what they do, I'll refer you to that overview story. So let's run through the configurations. With this 9.2 inch version of Maverick, we've got six total combinations. We've got the five inch moderator, the five inch suppressor, the eight inch suppressor, the 9.2 inch suppressor, the 5.5 inch braked config and the 6.5 inch braked config. Okay, let's talk about the recoil rig. So, inspired by, and with a lot of help from Cal Zamp from the Precision Rifle blog, we have built our own recoil testing rig. This uses industrial grade sensors from PCB, microelectronics, and is capable of reading forces at the buttstock at 20,000 force samplings per second. So this is not exactly what you'll feel against your shoulder because your shoulder is a dyna dynamic system and is pliable. But the results I'm gonna show you will be proportional to what you'll experience firing the rifle, rearward forces. So the rifle under test here is a full custom barreled action that I built, a 6.5 Creedmoor aimed at NRL Hunter competition and PRS competition in an XLR Element Magnesium 4.0 stock. This was put together to meet the 16 pound weight requirement for NRL Hunter competition. And so what we did to test this was to test recoil with the bare muzzle, no muzzle accessory at all, and then each of the configs that I just showed you, all six configurations. So we've got seven tests total, the bare muzzle and all of the Maverick configs based on the 9.2 inch version of this particular product. This is really cool stuff to be able to capture this and visualize it. Let's take a look at the results. So after some painstaking alignment, you know, here we've got up to 100,000 data points, depending on how many seconds this was capturing at 20,000 samples per second. A lot of trimming of the data. Once everything is all lined up, this is the raw data graphed in Excel. This is exactly what came off the sensor. And you can see how consistent this is. And what really stood out to me 
was the fact that obviously the bare muzzle has the highest peak forces. That's the, the top of the graph before it starts to go back down. The five inch moderator chopped it off a bit. The five inch suppressor chopped it off a bit more. And then the eight inch suppressor, 9.2 inch suppressor, 5.5 inch braked config and 6.5 inch braked config are almost the same curve. Fascinating. And in all of those cases, it takes a bit longer to reach peak forces in terms of time. You can see the samples down here. That is the individual data point. And again, there's 20,000 of those a second. So this is a split second in time. And you can see how well the results are repeatable and how well they line up. And they quantify how recoil is affected by each of these configurations. So let's look at the data in a chart. So what I did here was we took the baseline voltage and we looked at the peak voltage. So really this delta V, that's the change in voltage, is what we really want to do to quantify how these forces were reduced by each config. So here I have them sorted from highest peak forces to lowest peak forces. As you would expect, the bare muzzle had the highest peak forces. Then the five inch moderation, moderator at 12% reduction, five inch suppressor had 21% reduction. So look at that. We've almost doubled our force reduction by going from five inch moderator to five inch suppressor. Fascinating. 9.2 inch suppressor, 36% reduction. Eight inch suppressor, 37% reduction. 6.5 inch brake, 39% reduction, and 5.5 inch brake was 41% reduction. So it's interesting that the 5.5 inch brake in this test actually reduced 2% more than the 6.5 inch brake. Again, they're roughly equivalent. You can see on that graph, if we go back to that graph for a second, all of those configs that would be from eight inch suppressor on down to 6.5 inch brake were down kind of in the same general envelope within a few percentage points, about 5% total difference there. So I think one thing I noted is between the 5.5 the inch braked config and the 6.5 inch braked config, there was a big difference in perceived sound level reduction. I was wearing hearing protection, but you, I could just feel it. So. I think for competition or for hunting, I think that 6.5 inch brake to config would be really interesting if you need to stay on target and worry, worried about your sight picture. And that's the part of this whole equation that I would like to quantify that we don't yet have a really good solution for. And that's, here's some of our next steps here. What's next? Well, one of them is quantifying muzzle rise. I've thought about putting a laser on the rifle and looking at the projected laser and using the high-speed camera to look at that, that vertical bump. Uh, I'm thinking about using something like this Tacticam to take a look at the sight picture and then to look at how that is disrupted at a particular range, perhaps with a calibrated chart, those sorts of things. These are things that we'd like to do next. Obviously, recoil testing standard muzzle brakes. Hellfire from Area 419 would be one that I want to put on the standard and the, and the match. Uh, sound level. This is not an easy problem to solve at all. We could probably produce simple results that would be dependent on atmospheric and weather conditions and, and other factors, do a bunch of side-by-sides and get a relative difference. But that's a, that's a $5,000 instrument. To go up to you know military certified type stuff, you're up to a fifty thousand dollar investment in just the equipment, and there's quite a bit of analysis. This is a 3D phenomenon. There's a lot of different factors. It's not just a simple number at the end of the day of, of decibels. But I want to provide what information I can to you all because I think there's some value that we can provide there. It's just there's a disclaimer on the complexity of that problem domain for sure. And then also accuracy. I've actually noted our 223 trainer is a great example of this. Sometimes a suppressor can slightly enhance accuracy. 
sometimes it can result in drastic point of impact shift if the baffles aren't completely aligned, depending on the relief inside and, and the design of the suppressor, you can get quite a bit. At 100 yards, hopefully just a couple inches, sometimes quite a bit more than that in our limited testing that we've done so far. So those are some of the things that we're looking at as we go down this line of scientific testing, testing suppressors, testing brakes, you know, Here's what we would like to know is what information are you interested in? What things have you observed shooting a bare muzzle versus a brake versus a suppressor? And if you're in the market for a suppressor, you know, what are those factors that you're looking at and considering, you know, where Ultimate Reloader could take a data-driven approach and help supply the information to help you make those decisions? Drop a comment and we'll start the discussion. I'm having a lot of fun with this, so expect a lot more stories like this. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.